My name is Sarah Welch, and I'm the executive chef and partner at Marrow Detroit. Some of you may know me from season 19 of Top Chef. Uh, woo -woo. Spoiler, I didn't win. Um, but I can guarantee that none of you know me as a woman secretly obsessed with trash. And I know what you're thinking, trash. I came here to listen to this chef talk about food. Um, but my secret is that I've been harnessing waste and turning it into James Beard nominated food for years. Um, more than helping my business's bottom line, I see harness harnessing waste as my superpower for creating seasonally delicious food off Michigan's bounty. Um, I'm here today to ask all of you to look at your waste differently with the hopes that a singular phrase gets lodged in your head every single time you open your compost bin or your trash. I'm hoping that you think, is this really trash? So if you haven't jumped ship already and you're not like gross, so oh, this lady's weird, um, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you to suspend what you think you know about trash. Um, don't do it for the planet. Don't do it because it's the socially responsible thing to do but I'm gonna encourage you to ask that question because I believe that utilization can be your foodie muse. It can be a secret to that sauce, it can be dinner next week, it can replace Wordle as your daily mind puzzle. So <laughs> come with me for the next seven minutes and we'll figure out how I got that superpower and to see if maybe some of you out there have it too. Um, many of you that don't know me are thinking she's an environmental warrior and you're wrong. Um, I was raised by what I like to call a duality of waste. My mother uh, only uses paper plates even for nice dinners. And my grandmother used to have us wash paper towels and hang them out to dry. So <laughs> my mother grows all of her own tomatoes, props for mom, she cans them all, and my grandmother's closest thing to a tomato in her house was Heinz 57. And so you can imagine that this duality of waste was quite confusing as a child. What's trash? What's not trash? What's good food? What's not good food? It was all very confusing. I like to say that we were the kind of family that recycled cans not because it was good for the environment, but because it got me 10 cents, and that was my allowance. And so. Somehow, I decided to go to culinary school, and my confusion followed me there. We would spend hours cutting carrots into perfect little cubes, not just throwing away the peels into the trash, but throwing away all those rounded edges. And it wasn't until I started working under the tutelage of butchers that I got my first real taste of waste. Um, see, from them, I learned that they pay the same price for the prime rib of an animal as they do for the skin. And so in order to make their bottom dollar, they have to turn that skin into something really sexy that people like you want to buy. And as you can imagine, being a young female woman in a kitchen and the turtle at the bottom of the stack, it was me that was tasked with dealing with all this meaty trash, though in the industry we like to call that trim. Um, so pig's feet would come my way, they'd get laboriously deboned, they'd get stuffed with their meat, and they'd go on the menu as roulades for a really pretty penny. Or pig skin, very fatty, would get scraped for hours in the cooler um, until it could be turned into chicharrones. Even things like steak fat would get rendered and seasoned so we could cook potatoes in it and charge you more for those potatoes. And honestly, utilizing these products, it not only invigorated me, but I found that I was making dishes for the menu that other people were too lazy or too busy or too scared to make. And I began to see the whole world through these trash-colored glasses. I became a trash whisperer. Nothing hit the trash without coming through my station first. And I wanted more. I wanted to learn more about waste. Uh, I didn't just want to deal with meat trash. I, I wanted to know all trash. And so I left that business to explore and learn about things like kimchi, um, I learned that the controlled rotting of vegetables is not just packed full of flavor, but it's really good for you. And I learned that dry aging meat, decomposition, it can add umami and texture to your proteins. And eventually I have what I like to call trash colored LASIK, where I couldn't take those glasses off. So when some fool gave me an opportunity to open my own restaurant here in Detroit, I committed to myself that I wasn't gonna let all that waste go to waste. Bartenders who are juicing their lemons, 
Typically, they throw those away, not in my restaurant. We salt pack those, and we turn them into a hobo version of preserved lemon. Or herbs that don't look super hot, those get dehydrated and turned into aromatic herb oils that go into vinaigrettes on the menu. Even berries that aren't looking so hot, those can be fermented or cooked down into jams and saved for a season when all we have to cook is potatoes, and that season is close, guys. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, the good news is that unlike my mother and her paper plates and my grandmother and her paper towels, a happy medium exists. And all the kitchens I work in, we at a point in time are drowning in our own trash. And the only thing that is more overwhelming than that feeling is the potential and the excitement that comes from what we're going to do with it. And so why I understand why we have this commonality, I can understand trash can be scary. I encourage you to look at your trash differently. And change comes not from huge action right from the start, but just from simple consideration. I'm not asking you to go home and drink your spoiled milk and don't tell anyone that I've said that. And I'm not asking you to save every carrot peel. That would be crazy, no one does that. I'm just asking you for consideration. Ask yourself when you're going to throw something away, is this really trash? Not because it's responsible, but because it can be fun. The wilted arugula that's in the back of your fridge, and I know all of you, every one of you has wilted arugula in the back of your fridge. Take that, cook it down, put some garlic in it, some olive oil. I did it the other morning for my husband, just to test so that you guys wouldn't go home and make something really bad. Uh, and it's delicious. It becomes something all wholly new. Your onion butts, your vegetable peel. I know I said don't save all your carrot trim. But um, start a Ziploc bag in your freezer, and when you're feeling frisky, throw your trim in there. A month or two later, that bag is full of delicious, beautiful, flavorful trash. Put it underwater, cook it for an hour, and you've got veg stock. I know all of you buy veg stock. Why? Even the tops to your greens, your beets, your carrots, your radishes, those, give them a rinse. Don't just throw them in the trash and put them in your food processor. Bop them with some nuts, some cheese, some oil, and you'll have pesto. And if this conversation is working on you, even like a little bit, you're starting to feel really powerful. And you'll start zesting lemons with no plan of what to do with them because you're giving your trash a chance to be more. You're looking at those cilantro stems and you're thinking, man, I'm pretty sure those have more flavor than the leaves that I bought that cilantro for in the first place. And if you're as sick as me, one day you'll be at the farmer's market and instead of buying the beautiful tomatoes available, you'll look for the lumpy, bumpy tomatoes. You'll look at them like they're the one-eyed cat at the impound and you'll think, Man, I can make a really good life for that tomato as a salsa <laughs> or as a relish. And you might have some vision of a chef going to the farmer's market at the crack of dawn, but be it because of my deep-seated addiction to sleep or <laughs> because of my addiction to trash, um, I go at the very end and I walk through the market and I talk to farmers that I know and I see all of these half full tables of produce, some of it looking great, some of it looking a little wet or weird. And I think to myself, is this all trash? It can't be. And I see that as a challenge. If you call around, you'll find that I'm on the Detroit farmer food phone tree for who to call when uh, ugly produce needs a home. And my food is better for it. It's certainly far more exciting than it was before I started using waste as my inspiration. Because when you ask a normal chef what kind of food they cook, they say something like Italian food. But me, I say what I've got, because locality, seasonality, and waste are a framework that I work in that I think we should all be working in. Um, thanks. <laughs> Uh, my uh, other grandmother, my maternal grandmother, she only has one recipe. It's uh, kind of horrifying if you don't know the details. It's for pickled shrimp. It has five ingredients. And you're thinking, why would you pickle shrimp? You should do it. But um, she says of the vinegar, try different types. Um, it's my favorite part of any recipe I've ever read. And I think you should apply that ethos to your trash cookery. Because when you're saving something from the bin, there's no risk. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There's no recipe, there's only potential reward. If you make something god awful, it is certainly no worse off than it was as trash. And <laughs> you have a new don't to add to your list. Um, the arugula is a do, for the record. Um, and if you find that you've made something really exceptional, you have dinner covered, 
you have a cool new recipe to share with friends, and you have this creepy mantra that I've just shared with you that you can share with them too, with the hopes that they too might start looking at their trash a little bit differently and asking each other at dinner, is that really trash? And so yeah, if you leave this talk and you go home and the only thing you take from it is like, man, I should probably be composting. Like, that's a win. Um, <laughs> compost, I'm trying it, it sucks, but you should do it. Um, <laughs> but I think that your trash can do a lot more for you and I think that there's so much flavor to be had from there because truly what makes an exceptional chef and what makes food really delicious is not how perfectly you cut that carrot or how perfectly you cook that perfectly cut carrot. It's what your creative vision drives you to do with all of the things you cut off of that carrot. And so with the world at your fingertips and trash as your muse, you can be sure that your secret ingredient is never in short supply and that dinner is only one piece of garbage, a heap of adventure, and a singular question away. Just go home and ask yourself, is this really trash? Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs>